hurricane season reaches its peak. In August alone, there were seven tropical storms in the eastern Pacific. Heat, thunderstorms, what's next for the UK? Actually, there'll be fewer showers and a better chance through Saturday and Sunday of some sunny spells. And what exactly is an Indian summer? One thing an Indian summer is not is a very warm spell just after the end of summer. It's Friday the 10th of September and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir and this is Weathersnap, an insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. Whilst parts of the US continued to recover from Hurricane Ida last week, Major Hurricane Larry tracks close to Bermuda. And yes, we're now in peak hurricane season. Here's tropical prediction scientist Julian Hemming. Well, in the Atlantic, it certainly has been very busy. We've had 12 tropical storms so far and and several hurricanes. Three of them have become major hurricanes, Grace, Ida and Larry. So at this kind of halfway point in the season, we are running at about 150% of usual activity. We're a little bit behind where we were in 2020. And also it's worth noting that in 2020, there was a large number of major storms in the second half of the season, particularly October and November. How has the tropical North Atlantic compared to, say, the Pacific? The Pacific's been very much a a contrast to the Atlantic and actually different parts of the Pacific have behaved in different ways. So in the eastern Pacific, we had a, a very active start to the season with many storms. In August alone, there were seven tropical storms in the eastern Pacific. It's quietened down there a little bit now and the um, the activity is a little bit closer to average. Uh, over in the Western Pacific, it's actually been remarkably quiet. During August, there were no typhoons at all in the uh, Western Pacific. And that's actually in the historical record, which goes back to the Second World War. We've never had an August where there's been no typhoons recorded at all in the Western Pacific. However, things have changed rapidly in the last few days, and we have two storms there. Uh, Konson, which is uh, is currently passing over the Philippines, and most notably the Typhoon Chantu, which has developed very rapidly from next to nothing a few days ago to an extremely intense typhoon now. What would you say the hurricane season across the northern tropical Atlantic and East Pacific is very similar in duration and intensity to the Western Pacific typhoon season? The Atlantic season tends to be more confined in terms of the dates that it uh, occurs. It's unusual to get uh, Atlantic tropical storms before June, and even the ones we get in June and July are relatively rare and infrequent. They don't get to the the higher intensities normally. Um, But the, The peak of the season in terms of extreme activity is normally August through September and October. But in in other parts of the Pacific, particularly the Western Pacific, the season is far broader. And although there is still a peak in August, September, October, getting storms all through the year is quite possible, even though there's a low point in around February, March time. Why is that? Well, the Atlantic is uh, far more constrained by the development of the easterly waves, which form over Africa. Now, these normally don't uh, get going till about June uh, time. And so there isn't the kind of incipient storm activity there to help form the storms. And also the sea temperatures across the Atlantic out of season do get too low to sustain tropical storms. Whereas in the western parts of the Pacific, the sea temperatures in that area can remain very high, even though there are fluctuations throughout the year. Tropical prediction scientist Julian Hemming. Here in the UK, as we enter September with warm weather dominant, the phrase Indian summer has frequently appeared in news and on social media. But what do we actually mean by an Indian summer? His senior meteorologist, Helen Roberts. Often, when we experience a warm period of weather during the autumn months, we hear it referred to as an Indian summer. But what exactly does this mean and where does the phrase come from? An Indian summer is a name used to describe a warm, calm spell of weather that occurs in autumn, often after the first sharp frosts of the season. The Met Office Meteorological Glossary, first published in 1916, defines an Indian summer as a warm, calm spell of weather occurring in autumn, especially in October and November. The exact origins of the phrase are uncertain, Several writers have speculated it may originally have referred to a spell of warm, hazy autumn conditions that allowed native Indians to continue hunting. 
Whatever the origin of the phrase, it evidently first was used in the eastern United States. The first recorded use of the phrase appears in a letter written by a Frenchman called John Le Crevecoeur, dated 17th of January 1778. In his description of the Mohawk country, he writes, Sometimes the rain is followed by an interval of calm and warm, which is called the Indian summer. The term was first used in the UK in the early 19th century and went on to gain widespread usage. The concept of a warm autumn spell, though, was not new to the UK. Previously, variations of St Martin's summer were widely used across Europe to describe warm weather surrounding St Martin's Day on the 11th of November. One thing an Indian summer is not, though, is a very warm spell just after the end of summer. This is more just an extension of the summer season. This week, the hot weather has extended across most parts of the UK. And although not technically an Indian summer, it is unusual to see temperatures as high as 30 degrees Celsius. Gorgedon in West Wales reached 30.7 Celsius on Tuesday. This is only the seventh time in 50 years that the UK has had temperatures into the 30s. And the heat held on overnight into Wednesday, when the temperature in Aberporth, just south of Gorgedon, flatlined at a tropical 20.5 Celsius, which is provisionally the warmest September night on record. Hot air built from the south during Monday, reaching Scotland through Wednesday, when Charter Hall in the Borders recorded a temperature of 28.6 Celsius. This makes it the warmest Scottish September since 1906. As we've seen, warm air can lead to thundery breakdowns. So how are conditions set for the next few days? Here's Ada McGiven. The brief September hot spell has ended with a bang with some lively thunderstorms in places. But as we end the week and head into the weekend, actually there'll be fewer showers and a better chance through Saturday and Sunday of some sunny spells coming through. Although it will be much cooler compared to the weather earlier this week. Now on Saturday, having said that it will be turning drier, Actually, across northern Scotland, it will be a wet start to the weekend with some heavy rain and a keen breeze. Generally drier elsewhere with some sunshine, but always a chance of an odd shower for most parts of the UK. However, those showers will be less heavy and less widespread compared to Thursday and Friday. Temperatures back to around average after another mild night. And then on Sunday, the rain in the north of Scotland will ease. So a dry day for most with sunny spells. Again, still the chance of a shower or two in places, particularly southern Scotland, northern England. But for most, it's a fine day. Temperatures again around average, so high teens for many, around 20 Celsius at best. And feeling warm enough in any sunny spells. Into the start of next week, and it's a dry start for most, but it looks likely that some rain will start to move in from the west. And the trend for the early part of the week is that it's going to turn a little more unsettled in the south with the risk of heavy showers and thunderstorms, but it will also turn warmer. Whilst further north, it's likely to stay largely dry with some sunshine. Thanks, Aidan. Just before we go, here's Martin Bowles with a roundup of last week's highs and lows. Here are the weather extremes for the week, beginning on Monday the 30th of August and ending on Sunday the 5th of September. A very warm spell arrived in England and Wales at the end of the week, so the highest recorded UK temperature was 27.0 Celsius at Wiganholt in West Sussex on Sunday. The lowest temperature of the week was 0.3 Celsius at Braemar in Aberdeenshire on Tuesday. Following a prolonged dry spell, Rain finally arrived in Northern Ireland on Sunday. 15.0 mm was recorded at the Giants Causeway in County Antrim. Daylight hours are reducing significantly each day as we move into September. Even so, 13.1 hours was recorded on the island of Tyree in Western Scotland on Wednesday. Thanks, Martin. This has been Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazir and editor is Adrian Holloway. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office.